In memory of Kentaro Mira, I wanted to take a look back at all of his other lesser known manga. What I didn't realize was that art was his lifelong passion. By the age of 10, he began publishing a 40 volume manga in a school paper. I really admire his drive and inspiration because by the age of 10, he had more direction in his life than I do right now. This dedication led him to enter the Art College of Nihon University where he submitted the first manga featured in today's video. Unfortunately, some of his manga just can't be found anywhere, but thankfully I was able to find most of it. His pre-college manga will likely be uncovered with time considering Mira probably still owned copies of his school publication. Additionally, I read these manga in chronological order to have a better appreciation for his artistic improvements. The first manga we'll be looking at today is Futsutabi, a one-shot from 1985. It's set in the future where the last known remnants of humanity escape the horrors of war by migrating into large underground caves. The story begins 100 years later when the younger generation has forgotten about the outside world and is unaware that they've been divided by gender into separate cities for the sake of population control. The plot revolves around a girl who escapes the women's society and travels to the men's. Artistically speaking, I found Futatabi to be a shocking contrast from Mira's signature art style in every way. I felt like its art was a mixture between Akira regarding its style of backgrounds, technology, and adult male character designs mixed with the generic shonen manga character designs of the time. Although I haven't read too many manga from the 1980s, I get the feeling that this would almost be indistinguishable from the average shonen manga of the time when you're just comparing the art alone. I think Mira did an outstanding job of detailing the setting and technology, but sometimes the character designs left a little to be desired. Either way, this is still an outstanding production for a then 19 year old Mira. Ironically, Futatabi was Mira's entrance submission to Nihon University where he would ultimately be accepted. His next manga we'll be looking at is Noah, another one shot from 1985. I don't have enough information to determine if this was created before or after Futatabi, but some of the character designs look closer to Mira's signature art style, so I'm assuming it was created after. Noah appears to be inspired by Fist of the North Star and maybe a little Gundam. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world in the distant future where humanity has already begun living in colonies in outer space. The story revolves around Noah, who appears to be an early model of Guts and Angel, a woman rescued by Noah. The plot is pretty simple. It's a story of action and survival in a technologically advanced yet post-apocalyptic Earth. While there isn't too much to be said about the story, the Art outshines everything. Despite there being less than a year between these two works, there's a vast difference between the technical skills for Futatabi and Noah. For starters, the character designs look totally different and more original. This may be where Mira discovered his art style. What stood out to me the most is how his ability to draw advanced technology also improved greatly, giving me the impression that Mira really liked science fiction, which oddly is missing from Berserk. It feels like there's an interesting story behind his interest in science fiction and why he decided to lean away from it in favor of demons and berserk. One thing's for certain, Mira was an artist with a range capable of drawing numerous different styles, whether it was set in the distant future or medieval times. Our next manga will be Oro, King of Wolves, another one shot from 1989. From what I gather, this marks Mira's first of several joint ventures with another creator who just so happened to be Bronson, the creator of Fist of the North Star. It's immediately clear how Mira's four years of art school impacted his work. His ability to shade is simply on another level. There's such a smooth gradient of shadows across characters and backgrounds that are still difficult to take even with the help of Photoshop. Some of these panels look less like manga and more like black and white paintings. In addition to the visual improvements, this is the first of Mira's manga that I consider to be enjoyable for more than just the art alone as he greatly improved his action scenes since creating Noah. The story of Wolf King is an isekai where a man and his fiance living in then modern Japan were teleported back into the early 1200s Mongolia during the time of Genghis Khan. The protagonist is skilled in kendo, which easily transitions over to the sword, allowing him to become a skilled warrior. Although Wolf King is only four chapters long, its plot has some pretty creative twists that I won't spoil. There's also a sequel manga called Oroden, which unfortunately I was unable to find for this review. 
review. After releasing Wolf King, Mira began work on a new series that would forever change the world of anime, manga, and video games. Of course, that's none other than Berserk. I won't be covering Berserk in today's video because I haven't read a lot of it, and whenever I do finish, it deserves a separate video. If you're wondering about the future of Berserk, it's currently unclear, but one of Mira's assistants recently tweeted that he will do his best. Although it's a vague statement, I can't help but feel it's related to Berserk, considering it was within a week after Mira's passing. Our next manga is Japan, another one-shot manga created by the duo of Mira and Bronson in 1992. And it's another isekai. How ironic is it that two of the most famous mangaka of all time have gotten together on several occasions and only created isekais? The story of Japan follows several Japanese characters who discuss the downfall of various historical civilizations and how it's possible for modern countries to meet the same fate. The characters subsequently fall into a hole and get teleported into the future in a post-apocalyptic earth that's controlled by bandits. The story itself isn't much beside fighting thugs, but I enjoyed seeing its art because it's a clear culmination of Mira's and Bronson's styles. You've got these barren deserts with bandits pillaging everything in sight, like Fist of the North Star, and you also see a lot of Berserk in it too considering it's Mira's art. Several characters look like they came straight out of Berserk, especially this picture of Guts that looks like he took a trip to Vice City. In regards to its story, this is probably the least interesting manga from today's video so far, but I still think it's worth checking out for its art alone. Gigantomaxia is a 7 chapter one shot from 2013. It's the first non Berserk manga Mira would release in over 20 years. Maxia is set in some sort of fantasy alternate universe where a wrestler roams around with some mysterious little girl and fighting bugs and animals in humanoid form. Gigantomaxia is a 7 chapter one shot from 2013. It's the first non Berserk manga Mira would release in over 20 years. Maxia is set in some sort of fantasy alternate universe where a wrestler roams around with some mysterious little girl and fights bugs and animals in humanoid form as well as various giants. The story doesn't really make a lot of sense. It gives me the impression that this was a long, complex story floating around in Mira's mind and he decided to illustrate a fraction of it for the 20th anniversary of Young Animal magazine. It really feels disjointed, like it could have been volume 10 of a 20 volume series. As usual, the art is outstanding, but I get the feeling that this could have been a training exercise for Mira's assistants. I could be wrong, but the art in Berserk was much more complex at that time. Mira typically uses two types of shading in conjunction with one another, but Maxia appears to only utilize parallel hatching, which is similar to the art posted by his assistant on Twitter. Either way, I thought Maxia was a fun concept and featured some beautifully detailed artwork. I also loved how the the protagonist is a wrestler, and it was a nice breath of fresh air to see suplexes, brain busters, and clotheslines instead of guns or swords. The only thing I wasn't a fan of were a few questionable scenes with a little girl who kept asking if she could pee on the guy's face. I don't know what that was about, but otherwise I found her powers to be pretty interesting considering she gradually got younger as she used them. Kinda reminded me of a classic mech anime that I'm not gonna spoil. The last manga I'll be covering today is Doranki, an ongoing series from 2019. This is the first new manga to be released under the banner of Studio Gaga, which is technically no different than much of Berserk, it's just a more formal way of incorporating Mira's assistants so that they can get credit as well as being a more structured environment to consistently release Berserk in the future, or at least that was his plans at the time. Out of all the manga I featured in today's video, Doranki feels the most familiar to Berserk in my opinion. Sure, other manga may look closer, but that's just an aesthetic similarity. Doranki has undertones of mythology and philosophy that occasionally shine through the crevices similar to Berserk. When some think of Berserk, they may think of demons and bloody battles. When I think of Berserk, I think of the blacksmith's philosophy and Griffith's friendship speech. Doranki is set in a world seemingly filled with gods of nature similar to Shinto or various pagan religions. There are also references to Noah's Ark as well, which wouldn't be the first time Mira used biblical references. The story of Doranki follows Usumgalu, an androgynous genderless child born to the gods and delivered to an old couple who appear to be Noah and Nehemiah. 
As Usumgala grows, they begin building tools to make their parents' lives easier, such as an aqueduct. As the story unfolds, Usumgalu ventures out and meets new friends from neighboring villages and begins making tools for them, such as crossbows. I thought Durangi featured an interesting dynamic between man and nature considering how Usumgalu crafts crossbows making it easier to hunt, but the humans quickly took the lives of animals for granted and started killing in excess. It's clear that Durangi is an unfinished manga because it ends directly after opening up to the potential of several new plot points such as wars, ancient beasts, nature gods, and more. From what I gather, Duranki was initially intended to be a project to help hone the skills of Mira's assistants in order for them to eventually take larger roles in creating Berserk. This makes perfect sense to me because it gave Mira an opportunity to let them have more responsibility without impacting the production quality of Berserk. Regarding Mira's assistants, I was only able to find their Twitter account of Hideki Sugimoto, so if you want to follow him on Twitter, I think he's got some beautiful art and also give him your support as well because I'm sure this is a really difficult time for him. I wish I could find the other assistants and follow some of their art as well, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any of them. Overall, I enjoyed reading Mira's various manga back to back. None of them besides Berserk, I can say I recommend for their story alone, but I found them all to be intriguing for the sake of art quality and progression along with the sheer creativity, because Mira was an incredibly creative artist. I recommend checking out these manga in chronological order if you're a fan of Berserk and especially if you're an aspiring artist. Although the future of Berserk is uncertain, it's clear that Mira left behind a legacy that will continue to inspire artists around the world for many years to come. I think of his life as a success story that shows that you can achieve your dreams if you're diligent enough and keep your mind open to any available resources. Mira went to college for art and had the opportunity to work as an assistant under the creator of Hajime no Whippo, as well as his joint ventures with the creator of Fist of the North Star. Although these resources may not be available to you, there are still tons of skilled artists giving away their expertise for free on YouTube. The knowledge is out there, you just gotta assemble it and keep struggling, just like Guts. Lastly, I wanted to say that Mira's impact on the world will only last as long as he or his works are remembered. Please do your best to share the Berserk anime or manga with your friends friends so his memory will live even longer. Berserk is an awesome experience that has the power to turn people into anime or manga fans as well as inspired them to pursue art. I want you to tell me in the comment section below what does Mira and his work mean to you? Like seriously, if you have any inspiration and it led into you doing something, leave a comment about that. Not just for me because I, I like reading it, but leave it so that you can start a conversation with other people. So that other people can look there and say, this is how Berserk inspired them, you know? I just, I want people to know these things. Not just from me, but from you guys also. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. I've got a review of The Princess and the Pilot. I've got a lot of videos I'm working on right now, but that's going to be the next one. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you then.